Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I'm here to let you know that my Elmwood Stratomatic Baseball League has completed its season, and we are going to look at some stats. We're going to look at some stats of my Providence Grays. We're going to look at the final standings. In fact, we are going to look at the final standings uh, right now. So here are the final standings in the league. Um, again, just as a reminder, the Northern and Upstate Divisions are in one league, and the Island and Southern Divisions are in another league. And the top, well, the uh, division winners in each division automatically make the playoffs, and then the next two teams with the next two best records make the playoffs after that. So where we can see uh, we've got the Adams uh, family team winning the Northern Division and we have Federal Way winning the Upstate Division. Federal Way with 100 wins, Adams with 99. So the next two best teams are Keikianga with 94 and the Desert Dogs with 94, and just missing out, just missed it by that much. Missed it by that much. <laughs> Is uh, the Caseville Cannons, who will not make the playoffs and miss it by two games. In the Island Division, there is going to be a one-game playoff for this um, to see who wins the division because they're tied. But that's not really that important. Um, it's just for bragging rights who won the division. But um, Kremlin and Philly are both going to make it with 93 wins. Painted won the Southern Division with 90 wins. And um, and then the uh, last remaining team it would look like would be the Arnold team with 89 wins. Now, if you're talking about the highest draft pick for next year. That's going to go to Chapel. Chapel was 42 and 120. I had a team once, once that had a record like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, 42 and 120, that's pretty embarrassing. Uh, the next two worst teams are the Bobtown Perpetrators and the Green Lakes, uh, something or others. The Green Lakes Lakes. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, they're the next two, and then um, and then me. So I'm going to have the fourth pick in the draft next year. It was sounding great, but I could have used a little more cowbell. And uh, right now, I'm leaning towards it's going to be uh, Verlander. And I know, I know, he's 39 years old, and you don't generally want to waste a 10-year um, draft pick, a guy that you could have for 10 years on a 39-year-old, but I do just because I'm having fun, and uh, I, and I think my team's going to be pretty good next year. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we look at the team. So uh, there's the standings. So let's look at Providence right now. Um, yeah, we finished with 67 wins. Not very good, except... Um, well, you know, you got to consider we started off the year uh, five and thirteen, and we were looking real, real bad then. So we were, uh, you know, we played close to five five hundred ball since then. Again, it's it's really just players underperforming, and you're going to see that in the stats. I mean, you will clearly see that in the stats. It's not like I'm making an excuse. It's you can see that in the stats. Uh, but we were, yeah, 67 and 95. We were 29 and 52 at home, and we were 38 and 43 on the road. And again, again, I just, I don't seem to get this. Um, our, we were worse at home, and yet I made my lineup to specifically play well at home. We were, um, my home stadium was uh, better for... I think right-handed hitters and we had a lot of power hitting right-handed hitters like Tim Anderson, um, El Tuve, Grossman was a pin, was a, uh, a, a switch hitter. Um, so the stadium was built 
to help my lineup, and yet it really didn't. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to be done trying to figure that crap out. Um, you can see what our record against every team was at Green, against Green Lakes. We were five and seven. Uh, against the Hawaii team, we were seven and five. Against Keikianga, four and six. Adams Family, we were three and nine. And Bobtown, we were four and seven. See, this is part of the problem too. We were, we had a bad record, or not the kind of record you would want against bad teams. Federal Way, we were four and seven. The Bird Dogs, we were seven and five. Caseville, we were five and seven. And the Desert Dogs were 10 and 2 against us. We were only 2 and 10. And then down here, you know, these teams don't count as much, I don't think, because we don't play as many games against them. It's the games in your own division, your own league, that really um, can sink you. And did. So now let's go look at our primary stats. Here's what we got for the hitters. Uh, you got uh, um, J.D. Martinez was our best hitter. And he was the only guy, like, I think he was the only guy up here in the offensive side, maybe Castro as well, that, like, played to his card, that played as good as his card would have recommended, you know, would have uh, said, you know, that he would. So he hit 301. Um, he had 31 home runs and 499 at bats. Real good year, 42 doubles. Um, but only 84 RBIs because we didn't get a lot of guys on base. And Castro, he was good. He hit 293 and he had a good hitting card. So it's not like you wouldn't have expected that. Mercedes hit 291 and 179 at bats. Barnhart, I traded away. Ward hit 269. Uh, Tim Anderson, see, here we go. Tim Anderson was a 300 hitter last year. He hit 267 with 19 home runs. The 19 home runs, that's not bad, but the 267, when you hit 300, really? No. And um, another guy I want to point out here is El Tuve. El Tuve hit 229. 229 with 25 home runs. Again, the home runs, not bad, but the 229 is abysmal compared to what the card said he would generally do. So, you know, you have to see this from my standpoint. I go out and I trade for El Tuve. All I can do is go trade for what I perceive as good players. I can't help that the game says, no, guess what? He's really not a good player. Um, Presley I traded for uh, partway through the year, but it is, in fact, right at the trade deadline I got him. But it is uh, instructive that he had a, a half ERA for me, which was awesome. And he is good in real life, so I'll keep him next year. Um, let's see. Who, let's, uh, Gos, Gos, Gosman I traded. Now, he was good for me. Well, he, actually, he was only six, six and six. But I traded him near or at the trade deadline and got Castillo for him. So, um, Luis Castillo. And that turned out to be good because Gosman isn't as good in real life, I don't think. At least last I checked, he isn't. As uh, as Castillo is. Um, Curtis uh, did not play. McGee, Scott, um, Bubich. Bubich is having a very bad real life, but I'm probably going to keep him anyway. I'm going to hold on to him and see if he can turn it around in his career. Um, Jimenez. Jimenez had a really good year for the Detroit Tigers out of their bullpen, and I'm keeping him. Now, here you go. Tyler Anderson. Had a really good year for the Dodgers. Now here he was 8-11 and 11 for me um, with a 484 earned run average. But for the Dodgers, in real life, the guy is great. Castillo, again, very good in real life. So you're going to have Tyler Anderson Castillo already in your rotation. Um, Yarbrough I'm going to keep, but he's not having a good year. And then Cueto. Cueto is having a very good year. Well, he's having a good year. Uh, for the White Sox. Um, Alex Wood, I traded away. Lester won't be back. So you got right there, you got three good starters. Tyler Anderson, Castillo, and Cueto coming back. And then if you draft, here's my thinking, you draft uh, Verlander with the, uh, with the first pick, or with the fourth pick in the first round. Um, then you've got Verlander, 
Tyler Anderson, Castillo, and Cueto as your top four starting pitchers. That's going to be a pretty good rotation. And then you're already going to have Presley and uh, Presley and Joe Jimenez in your bullpen. So that's going to be pretty good stuff. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, and not to mention, you know, Altuve, yes, he had a terrible year in comparison to the card, but you got to think that's not going to happen every year, and he is having a good year himself. Um, uh, Tim Anderson, is he's having a good year, but he also was injured, so he's going to have a high injury rating next year. I'm going to have to watch out for that. Martinez is having a good year, but not as good with the power. Um, but he is a good hitter. He's still a good, solid hitter. Uh, Ward actually um, played better than he did in his card last year. In real life, he did. So we'll see. In real life, he's he's better. What I'm saying is the card that I had that these stats are based off of, Ward is better than that in um, 2022. So he'll be good. Um yeah, I'm taking Verlander. Now, I have the fourth pick. The only way I don't take Verlander is if um, Rushman is available. If Adley Rushman's available at number four, I take Adley Rushman. But he's the only one. He is the only young uh, player with upside that I'm going to consider over Verlander. Because I think if I get Verlander, I've got a chance to be right in there in the, uh, in the competitive mix for next season. What's that? Playoffs? Don't talk about it. Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. You know, maybe not because who knows, you know, you can get stats like this. If, if you can get stats like this one year, you can get them the next year with El Tuve and his 229. So, um, yeah, let's go down and take a look. Let's see. League stats. And let's look at um, league leaders. Uh, the batting average, Bronx, uh, Lewis Robert for Bronx had a 346 batting average. Uh, Turner for uh, Federal Way had a 322 batting average. Uh, Yuli Guriel for the Knights had hit 309. Marte of Painted hit 303. Now you're just getting into normal stats. Uh, runs scored. Semyon scored 121 runs. Judge scored 113. Cedric Mullins scored 112. Uh, for hits, 208 for Turner. Trey Turner had a 208 hits, and Guriel had 191. Vlad Guerrero Jr. had 188. Doubles leaders, Bogarts had 57, and Bryce Harper for Endwell had 51. And then uh, Tom Edmond had 48 doubles. So my man is my man Martinez. Yeah, he's up there, 42. He, he made the list. Triples, you got 12 for, for Wander Franco and 10 for Phillips. And uh, home runs. Let's take a look at the home run leader. The home run leader was Alfonso with 56. And I mean, you know, that's believable. Um Perez had 49, though. Zanino had 49. That you can kind of believe. Patrick Wisdom had 49. Semyon had 48. Look at this. A lot of home runs. Runs batted in 141 for Alfonso. And Wisdom had 126. Guerrero Jr. had 122. Um, let's see here. What else we got? Stolen bases. Stolen base percentage, 885 for Badu. Actual stolen bases, though, Marte, 76 with painted. You know that he loves he loves stolen bases, and he loves guys who can steal. And then it drops off a cliff to 40 after that, which is, you know, in today's day and age, you would expect that, probably. Um, so let's see, what do we got here? Hitting streaks. Hitting streaks. My man Martinez lead. He led the league in the hitting streak. 20 games. Nice. Well, nice, but it didn't help me. Um, <laughs> total average Acuna Jr. had a 1.101. 
Harper had a 1.032, O'Neill had a 1028, and Springer had a 1018. Um, total bases, Turner had 361, Alfonso had 359. So, let's see here. Um, What do we got here? All right, ERA. Let's get down here with the pitchers. ERA, Burns had a 183. Suarez, for Adams, who I drafted but traded to him during the year, had a 245. Gossman had a 281. Wheeler had a 283. And you can just see the rest of them down there. I didn't have anybody that made it. Innings pitched. Alcantara had 252 innings pitched. Which I think uh, exceeds the uh, limit in our league, so the commissioner may want to look into that. Um, Monta, I think it's 250. If you qualify to pitch all year and you didn't pitch 250 innings, I think you're capped at 250. But, uh, you know, who am I to say? Um, so let's see here. Game started. Ivaldi started 39. Rodriguez started 37. I don't have anybody really on that list. Um, games games pitched. I got Tyler Rogers on that list, 71. And uh, nobody else. Save percentage. Do I have anybody? Anyone? Bueller? Anyone? Uh, no, doesn't look like it. Um, do I have anyone else on any other kind of list? Well, hits allowed. I should. No, I guess not. I guess my guys didn't pitch enough to allow that many hits. Runs, Yarborough allowed 117. He made that list, but that's not a good list to make. Home runs allowed. Yarborough is number two with 43. 43 jacks allowed by Yarborough, and he didn't even pitch that many innings. Ah, oh, man. Yeah, I'm making the lists that you don't want to make. That's really what's going on here. So anyway, um, let's see what the uh, let's see what the awards voting did for managers, because um, I'm not really concerned about what what the thing said for players. Manager of the year, Christian Scott Dufour, the Adams family man, and then uh, Harold Sutton would have been second. Tom Bunch would have been third. Rob Carper third. He's Kremlin and. Gene Kipfer, the, um, the, um, I forget what he is. Um, Keikianga, maybe Keikianga Riverman, yeah. So that was a look at our league. That's where everybody finished. I'll give you one more look at the, uh, the league, uh, yeah, the league standings. So we'll come back next year. We'll try it again. Try it again, maybe with Verlander in my starting rotation. We'll see. Um, cause I, like I said, I got four good, I mean, three good starters already. You add Verlander, that's four, four really good starters. Um, like Cueto would be the, the fourth guy. He'd be my fourth guy. And I think he has like a 122 whip right now in real life. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it works out, but, uh, that is going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke signing off.